Hi everyone. Welcome to Java Techie. In the world of microservices, one of the most common challenges is making synchronous communication between services, right? If you have worked with microservices, you have probably seen a bunch of HTTP client code using REST template to call your upstream services. And yes, that works fine. In fact, many companies still use it in production. But here is the catch. If you are using REST template for communication, then you manually needs to build your URL. All the get, post, put, delete different type of HTTP method, you need to build the URL by yourself. Then you also need to configure the headers. To call one services, you need some set of headers, right? That you need to manually add. And also in some certain case, you need to handle the serialization and deserialization logic. Sounds like a lot of boilerplate code, isn't it? Now what if you could skip all that? No manual URL construction, no repetitive code. You just write a Java interface with a couple of annotations and the rest heavy lifting things handled for you automatically. That's where Fain client comes in. Fain client is a declarative REST client that makes inter-service communication clean, simple and powerful. Okay. So in this video, I will show you how to use Fain client in a Spring Boot microservices setup with a real world example. We will go step by step from defining the Fain client to making actual service to service calls. Ok, alright. So without any further delay, let's get started. So to save our time, already I created two simple microservices, student service and core service. Now you can imagine this core service as upstream or server side code. If you see, I have defined the simple logic, go to the course controller. If you observe here, we have defined three different endpoints: get all the course, get the course by ID and just add rating to a specific course. Okay. Now if you open the core service. I just hard coded few list of cores from the JSON file. Then I am just playing with this hard code list. Get course by ID. I am returning the course by ID. Then I am returning the hard coded list for get all cores. Then add rating. Get the rating object for specific cores. Then add a individual rating to that. Okay. This is the simple logic guys. Even I didn't include the database or no complex configuration. Okay, this is what the endpoints we want to consume from the student service. Now let's go to the student service, go to the controller package. Now if you see here, I have student controller, then student controller talk to the student service. The student service will talk to the course REST client service. So the first REST client service I just want to show you with the REST template. Because that is what we usually do in our day to day coding, right? So we just inject the REST template, then get course by ID. We pass the base URL of course service. This is the base URL. Then we just build the URL. See the problem in the REST template. It's not the problem, it's duplicate code. We are building the URL manually, then we execute the REST call. And at the end, we are also doing the serialization and deserialization. Can you see here? I am telling to the REST template, hey, this is what the return type I am expecting. And I am just mapping it. This is kind of additional serialization and deserialization. And since this is the simple application, I don't have any specific header. So in real time, you must need to define the headers as per the client need or server need. Okay. Let's say I have defined a server, I will expect few input from you as part of the header. So you must need to configure that. Same thing, see get course by id, I have did these things. Then again, I am repeating the same in get all the course. Same here for submit course rating. Okay, this is what the REST template approach. Now I am just simply calling this particular client from my service. 
and this service i am calling from my controller this is the simple flow rather than write it from the scratch i thought to share it directly so that we can focus time on understanding the fain client implementation okay so this is the simple server and client communication using rest template now if i will execute this flow will work as expected there is no issue but what i want i want to avoid this boilerplate code i want to write my client code more readable format okay i want to keep it clean and readable so for that i will not go with the rest template rather i will use the fain client so let's start defining the fain client as you understand while defining the fain client you no need to write any complex logic you just define the interface and just tell to the spring by defining some methods and annotation okay let me show you it's very simple and you can use it if you are using microservices okay if you have bunch of microservices and you are using spring cloud spring boot then you must need to use fain client rather than going for rest template or web client or any other uh, medium to consume your upstream so to start play with the fain client first you need to add the fain client dependency if you observe in the pom.xml we have added spring cloud starter open fain okay and the spring cloud version currently i am using this one now what i can do go to the client package i'll just define a interface course client now here by defining the annotation fain client define what is the name of your client let's say course client and what is the url base url i'll keep till 8081 okay this is the simple way you can define your base url and name of your client now if you want you can also configure this value outside to the application or you can load it from your application.properties file or yml file so if you see here in application.yml file i have defined application services course url tomorrow you want to add another service just define the hierarchy okay let's say something payment then you can define the url whatever the url you have okay that's not the concern we are not going to discuss about it i want to load this value directly in my course client so you know how to load the properties in spring right just define this this is the simple thing now that's fine i have just defined the name of it and i have defined the base url now how can i define my endpoint if you see here i tell to the spring boot hey use the rest template call this particular endpoint of type which method get method get for entity can you see here and this is the url and i am expecting this as a response how you can define these things in this interface so it's very simple you no need to take the headache of defining the url and setting up the header and defining the serialization and deserialization just go to your server side code which is nothing your core service and try to understand which type of http method you have defined now if you see to get all the cores you have defined the method type as a get and does it require any input parameter no what it returns list of cores you just remember this signature similarly to load the course by id it required one parameter of type http method get and then adding the rating it required it is of type post http method and it required one input parameter and one request body just create the same skeleton in your interface just define these methods without having any implementation in your client code now let me copy this how simple is this how much time it takes for me to define the client code or client logic to call the upstream 
it took hardly 30 second for me right so we also need to do some refactoring because we just copy paste the server code server endpoints now you might have a question hey do i need to define the same method name no you can define any method name here let's say this is course and you can change it to submit rating and also you no need to keep the response entity because this is not my controller code right this is my client code you need to return the raw object also since this is interface all the method by default public and abstract you can remove this access modifier we are all good now now do you know how it works when i call the course method how it directly call my course endpoint get all the course let me tell you so spring internally what it does it create a proxy of your flame fain client fine now once it create the proxy it internally use rest template or any http template to build the request when i am saying build the request which type of request it will build based on your method signature when i am saying method signature okay for this one right get mapping so the method signature which type of http method we are using get is there any input parameter no what it is expecting to return list of course okay so all the things it does behind the scene okay behind the scene also it will map what url by loading your this particular value so it build everything for you on the fly you only need to call the method courses let me keep it as a node let it be now let's try to use these methods instead of using our course rest client service okay so what i can do fine now let's go to the student service let me comment it out and we'll inject private course client which is nothing the fain client interface now just replace the method name what we have defined in our interface all good now this particular service we are calling from our controller okay we can simply start both course service and student service and we can try accessing these endpoints to validate whether we are able to consume the upstream endpoints or not now once i trigger this particular request request will go to the student service from student service we are internally calling the fain client which is nothing our course client who will trigger to this particular endpoint url if you see the application yml this is the url also let me give the root url okay api courses then all the mapping and url we have defined here it will just copy that particular url and it follow all these three steps okay let's test it then you will understand whether it is working or not and how simple is this to use fain client to consume the http methods okay now to enable the fain client in your system you can go to the main class you need to define enable fain clients okay that's it so let's start the core service first because that is what my upstream right then parallelly i can start the student service so student service is up and running and course is also running on port 8081 now what we can do go to the browser and open the swagger now you can see these three endpoint from student service right see the url first let me get all the course can i see the result here am i getting the result this rest call 
done by the fain client all the records what we have returning from the core service i am able to consume that from student service now let me take other endpoint i want to load the course of id2 i am getting course id2 name of the course all the value these two are the get endpoint right now let's try for the post i want to add the rating to a specific course try it out let's say i want to add for two course id2 student name i will give something sams i will give five star comment click on execute rating submitted successfully now if i will fetch the course to again i should see that result can i see here the comment i added all the things is working as expected right so this is how you can use fain client to simplify your client code now if you go to the fain client in the student service here if you observe what we have defined application.service.course.url the whole host port everything we have defined but if you are using service registry like eureka or kubernetes registry or any service registry then you no need to deal with the host and port you can directly give the service name whatever the service name you have registered that's different thing okay but you have this option to directly define the service rather than hard code your host and port okay so try using fain client if you are using microservice architecture and if you have bunch of microservices and you want to use the declarative rest client using this fain you can play with it just give it try and let me know in a comment section if you have any doubts